<sighs> Namaste. So no need snowflake here. Moon in Taurus transit. Sun in Libra energy empowerment. We'll read the moon phase to you first. Today's is the reigning gibbous to pleasure. This is the second one after the full moon. 18. It's actually the number in the traditional tarot of the moon card. And it's 81 backwards and 81 is the number for leadership. Made of one new beginnings and eight infinity manifestation. Together equally nine physical completion. Pleasure. Are you taking life intensively or are you taking life too intensively or too seriously? The time has come to call in the pleasures of life. Seek light-heartedness at this time. Focus on what would make you happy. Schedule in activities you find pleasurable. And the incantation, like usual, I, we and you. I open myself to the pleasures of life. We open ourselves to the pleasures of life. You open yourself to the pleasures of life. Yes, you do. You open yourself to the pleasures of life. We open ourselves to the pleasures of life. I open myself to the pleasures of life. In our search for a better life, something happened along the way. We forgot how to find real pleasure in what we do rather than just being diverted from the everyday. Life can be overwhelming. And our rational minds seem to need every available minute of our time to be able to cope with its demands. Pleasure has taken the back seat. Or there is a pattern of now forming destructive tendencies such as binge drinking rather than simply having a wine or two with friends. A big part of pleasure is letting go. This, this does not mean surrendering or giving up. It simply means handing over all our administration, stress and worries for a time and immersing ourselves in something joyful. When we don't allow ourselves to experience pleasure, whether in the form of laughter, play, sensuality or the development of skills, we remain less than whole and feel a wanting. No fun actually makes us dull indeed. Over time, we are much less effective in our emotional and work lives if we do not experience regular doses of pleasure. Our ancient ancestors knew the importance of pleasure in the forming of a healthy mind, body and spirit. There were gods and goddesses dedicated to happiness and the pleasures of life such as the Egyptian goddess Hathor. The temples of Hathor were joyful places full of songs and beauty. There were even small temples placed in her honour outside other major deities, temples, so that people could be in a happy and contented mental mood before entering to worship. The Egyptians clearly believed that having a positive or relaxed state of mind assisted in having a positive spiritual connection. Companion stone or metal, turquoise. And then tomorrow's is the waning gibbous three, balance. Number 19, the number of pride, the number of the sun card. Seek balance. Extremes of anything are rarely healthy or useful. There may be an overreaction that has caused the issue. Ground yourself and allow your strength to rise from there. Be aware of, be aware of where the imbalances in your life are at present. And the incantation. I seek and man maintain healthy balance in my life. 
We seek and maintain healthy balance in our life. You seek and maintain healthy balance in your life. Yes, you seek and maintain healthy balance in your life. We seek and maintain healthy balance in our life. I seek and maintain healthy balance in my life. Working with the lunar cycle on a regular basis helps us actually experience the flow and balance of nature. The moon shows us the gradual and peaceful process of waxing and waning and the phases of perfect balance within. Our bodies and minds and our human spirit seek balance, yet perfect balance is almost impossible to achieve. Think on this. If we try to stand on one leg and balance ourselves, no matter how good at balancing on one leg we may be, it is a kind of dance, is it not? The large and small muscles in our legs adjust to keep us upright, always moving, never perfectly still. The rest of our body is also performing a myriad of adjustments, a little to the right here in one moment, a little to the centre there. The point is that balance is a process, something we can actively seek if we are wise. We need to know when we are unbalanced so we can return to homeostasis. It is useful to know where our imbalances lie and to make a decision about moving towards a more balanced version. Self-reflection helps identify this. When we are too something, working too long, thinking too fast, eating too much, we need to be honest with ourselves so we can identify this quite easily. Allowing ourselves a more considered and balanced view invites a true peacefulness into our lives, something that many people crave in this incredibly busy and chaotic world. Balance allows us to understand that overwhelm isn't a place we want to visit, let alone set up home in. Companion stone, bloodstone. Waning Gibbous 4. Beauty. Number 20. Beauty is like medicine. It can heal even the most broken spirit. Beauty is everywhere in nature. Just look. Beauty comes in many forms and we can choose to find it. I love how I look. Rid yourself of clutter and what you find disagreeable. The incantation. I see beauty everywhere and it raises my vibration. We see beauty everywhere and it raises our vibration. You see beauty everywhere and it raises your vibration. Yes, you see beauty everywhere and it raises your vibration. We see beauty everywhere and it raises our vibration. I see beauty everywhere and it raises my vibration. One of the high needs in my life is that of beauty. I need to be exposed to what I find beautiful often to be at my best. You might find that a strange need, but it's far from uncommon, especially among creatives and artists. Beauty to me isn't lots of makeup or fancy skin care or society's current beauty ideal. For me, Beauty is nature and having things I find beautiful in my environment. I look around me as I write and I can see the inky dark clouds racing across a violent sky and the birds riding the wind and it's beautiful. On my desk is a small piece of glass a friend made for me in a small bowl full of summer frangipani. My feet rest on a hand-woven carpet of desert colours and my toenails are painted a shimmering turquoise, my favourite colour. All of these are expressions of beauty to me. They raise my mood. They give joy to my eyes, my heart and my mind. Everyone can experience beauty every day if they choose to look.
One of the important differences between the ancient pagan and the modern idea of beauty is that the old ways state there is a need for the core of the self to be developed and strengthened to enable and foster true beauty. This is an important two-way double punch as there is a strong mind-body connection when it comes to both beauty and vitality. Yes, while it is acceptable to use therapies that treat or beautify externally, it's equally important to stop bad habits detrimental to health that will interrupt the good you are doing. For example, you could be using the most effective treatments on the market to nourish your skin, but if you can't give up smoking, there is a finite level of health that your skin can achieve. The unbalanced first world ideal of beauty is at its zenith right now, with more people than ever before undergoing and normalising plastic surgery and injectable chemicals. Everyone has an individual right to decide how they wish their body to look and adopt an idea of physical beauty. However, it's the source of the influence that is worrying. Who told a woman who has altered her appearance that there was something wrong with her fa face, eyes, smile, expression in the first place? Who had the audacity to say you are not enough because she had some smile lines? Think about that. Who is making women in particular so fearful? Who or what wants you to question yourself and the very essence of how you interact with the world and why? Who wants you to be the same as everyone else and less of who you are? Society? Some marketing guy for big cosmetics? A retouched spokes model? Real beauty is hypnotic, yet in reality has less to do with youth than it does with the spirit coming through the skin. The word charisma comes from the Greek charis and ma, meaning the spirit shining through. Each of us possesses a unique beauty, one that gives us confidence if we recognise it. Each of us is desirable, each of us perfectly formed to be what we want to be. But should we become too obsessed by the external? Something that is, after all, fleeting. We may become unhappy and chase an ideal that is impossible to uphold. And the companion stone is Larry Marr. Larry Marr. So this is the card given. I'm just going to read the information on the Taurus moon. Oopsie daisy. Taurus moon's energy is feminine, semi-fruitful and earthy. The moon is exalted, very strong in Taurus. Taurus is known as the farmer's sign because of its associations with farmland and precipitation that is the typical day-long soaker variety. Taurus energy is good to incorporate into your plans when patience, practicality and perseverance are needed. Be aware, though, that you may also experience stubbornness in this sign. Things started in Taurus tend to be long-lasting and to increase in value. This can be very supportive energy in a marriage election. On the downside, the fixed energy of this sign resists change, or the letting go of even the most difficult situations. A divorce following a marriage that occurred during a Taurus moon may be difficult and costly to end. Things begun now tend to begin to, tend to become habitual and harder to alter. If you want to make changes in something you started, it would be better to wait for Gemini. This is a good time to get a loan, but expect the people in charge of money to be cautious and slow to make decisions. Ruler Venus Impulse, stability, rules the neck, throat and voice. Thank you, Llewellyn's 2020 Moon Sign book. The moon in Taurus. The moon to be grounded and real. Element, earth. Quality, fixed. 
ruling planet Venus, the planet of love. Symbol, the bull. The first earth sign of the zodiac, the Taurus moon, is all about dealing with what is real, deep roots, security and stability and feeling at home in you. As such, it may have you going to ground. Root to rise is the essence of this moon. You need to be rooted in your own reality, your own truth and to know, accept and own every part of yourself completely, wholeheartedly and unapologetically. Which first and foremost means reaching into your depths and seeing yourself for who you truly are. This moon will show you the reality of your life as it is right here, right now. The truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's only from this point of being in the reality of the sun time. It's only from this point of being in the reality of the present moment that necessary change can ensue. It's a moon for focusing your intention on what matters to you and what needs to change in order for you to become completely happy and secure. This moon will help you to build a safe sanctuary in all aspects of your life, from the emotional to the financial. And in doing so, you may feel some foundations start to shift and some restructuring take place. This can feel quite scary, as Taurus doesn't like initial change. And you may notice yourself trying to cling on tightly, feeling unbalanced, ungrounded, unsure or overly emotional. Notice what you are trying to cling on to and why. Often, it is because you have created a false sense of security out of this particular thing, and Taurus only wants what is genuine and lasting to remain. That's why this moon may have you feeling like a bull in a china shop, as structures that aren't working start to fall down, and anything that isn't built up on a real, dependable, true foundation crumbles. Try to trust in this whole process, as the security this moon is asking you to find is something deeper. It's a security and belief in yourself and your future, based on being firmly rooted in your own truth and reality. As the Taurus moon deals with practical matters of material security, it makes this a wonderful moon to welcome in financial abundance. Take some time to go through your finances and get to grips with them. Notice any stories you have around money concerning lack and instead be open to welcoming in abundance and receiving alternative or new avenues of income and figuring out ways you can use your passions to help make you money. Taurus also helps you to understand that true security, stability and ultimately happiness come from the inside. Sometimes we can use the material and outside world to fill a void on the inside, but material gains should be com complementary to rather than the reason for your happiness. Taurus wants you to create a life in which your happiness is an inside job and you feel whole, complete, safe and secure in yourself. Mostly, though, this is a moon for self-care. It's a moon that wants to know what brings you pleasure and joy and fills you up. It teaches you about enjoying life rather than adopting the masculine energy of doing. This moon shows you what gifts are available to you if you are willing to slow down and tune in to the feminine energy of receiving. This is a moon of focusing more on the inner journey than the outer, of fertilising your own earth, your heart and your soul, so that your own seeds can take root and flourish. The Taurus moon calls you into finding a deep inner security that only comes from feeling safe and fully at home in you. It's a moon of allowing yourself to be guided by your own wisdom and realising that when you stop pushing and pulling, life becomes easy and pleasurable. It's a moon of giving yourself exactly what you need when you need it and it's a time for a life review. Finding balance, making vital changes for your security and most of all, finding your roots. 
The things and people that nourish, sustain, nurture, feed, inspire, hold you up and bring you absolute joy. Venus, the planet of love, rules Taurus. Venus brings out the self-care element of this moon, asking you to love yourself and the body you are in. It's a wonderful moon to notice if you resist self-care. Do you feel it's selfish? Lazy? Do you feel you are not deserving of your own love and care? Do you struggle to treat yourself? Do you never allow yourself to slow down and rest? These are all ways in which you sabotage the universal flow of energy and receiving, but this moon will help you to see this and make amends so that you can fully receive in order to be able to give. The key words for Taurus are, I have. Use this as a journal prompt and see what flows to you in answer. Set some intentions. Or create affirmations using this declaration at the beginning. Things like, I have safe structures in my life. I have time to self-care. I have a trust in myself. I feel at home. What to watch out for under a Taurus moon? Becoming overly materialistic, looking to the material world for answers and security. Aversion to change, so much so that you would rather stay in unhappy situations and make excuses for them. Being stubborn, so incredibly stubborn. A crystal for this moon. Citrine for financial abundance. Black tourmaline for grounding and security. Or rose quartz for self-love and care. Thank you, Kirsty Gallagher. Lunar living, working with the magic of the moon cycles. So we're going to start with the subconscious, bottom of the pack, unaware, unseen reason for the reading. This energy empowerment, spectrum of energies. So we've got four for the bottom and five for the top. And we won't start with the very bottom. We'll start with the fourth one in and then get to the very bottom. We'll leave the links below. Because <coughs> we've had this one before. The six of air. We've had a lot of them before, actually. So we'll leave the links below for the ones that are there. Keywords, solutions, comparisons, compromise. Open-mindedness, mindfulness, illumination, epiphany, personal power. Key phrases, a time of research and investigation. Look at and compare a range of options. Weigh the pros and cons. Be willing to compromise. Don't let rigidity hamper possible success. A moment of epiphany. Step into your personal power. Do not discredit what others offer. And then the next one we've got is 12, the night of fire, the hero. Keywords, guardian, protector, saviour, activist, honourable, integral, selfless, honest. Key phrases, a person of noble qualities, ordinary people who do extraordinary acts, a person who lies cannot be trusted, put another's well-being before your own at this time, accord others with respect and dignity, avoid gossip, an opportunity for redemption, give a second chance, altruism or wounded ego. And then another one that keeps showing its face. 
is the Ace of Wands. Ace of Fire, One of Fire. Key words, new beginnings, initiative, action, conception, invention, creation, creativity, procrastination. Key phrases, new beginnings, opportunities, actively pursue your goals, take advantage of what's being offered, move beyond research and planning, weave your future into being, take something old and make it better. Break with tradition and offer something new. Uncertainty inspires procrastination. And then the very bottom unseen reason for the reading, spectrum of the energies, is another knight. The twelve, the scribe, twelve of air, knight of air. Keywords, record keeper, information, knowledge. Tradition, history, personal history, preservation, censorship. Key phrases, look for an unbiased source. Be objective and seek multiple perspectives. Visit the library or archives. Value the written word by writing things down. Document your life journey. Make multiple copies of your digital files. A need to censor yourself. Guard your personal information. Thank you all. And then we're going to go to the top spectrum of the readings. And then we'll start with the fifth one inwards. This is the top of the pack, the seen, the aware, conscious reason for the reading. And we're starting with the three of air. A lot of air, a lot of swords, a lot of the mind. Keywords, education, talent, study, willingness, guides, teachers, Comprehension, communication, perception. Key phrases, expand your mind. Every experience offers a lesson. Education is a lifelong process. Learning aids comprehension. Lessons repeat until we understand. Learning transforms talent into skill. Don't kill the messenger. Ignorance is nothing to be proud of. And the next one. Fourteen at the south. Fourteen in the major arcana in tra traditional tarot is the temper temperance. Key words, I am. Identity, self-realisation, self-manifestation, centre, peace, acceptance. Key phrases, establish a unique and individual identity. Be free of definitions and labels. You have unlimited potential. How has your past shaped you? Identity is fluid and changing. Who you are is for you to determine. Are you trying to fit with the wrong crowd? Know who you are. Who do you wish to become? A path of loving expansion. Let go of a herd mentality. Think for yourself. Beautiful card, that one. And the next one is 18, thought. 18 in the traditional tower and major arcana is the moon. Keywords, thought, reality, power. Attention, focus, attraction, positivity, negativity, universal law. Key phrases, thought creates reality. Thought is the foundation of consciousness. Don't rush your thinking. Be certain. Thought is energy. Energy flows where attention goes. Be mindful of the universal laws. Our conscious and unconscious mind in accord. Be realistic instead of optimistic or pessimistic. Good and bad go hand in hand. Change your mind, change your, real change your life. Do not overthink or speculate. Question the critical mind speak.
And then we have the Four of Air. Keywords, structure, routine, order, patterns, discipline, organisation, understanding, productivity. Key phrases, order your environment, banish clutter, clean house, create structure in your day, follow a routine, keep a time budget. If you truly want something, you will make time for it. Limit distraction and time wasters. Weed out bad habits. Remove negative influences. Timekeeper. And then the very top scene aware conscious spectrum of the energies reason for the reading is the journey. 17. 17 is the number of the star in the major arcana. Keywords, experience, character, the past, cause and effect, consequence, conditioning, environment, external influences, providence. Key phrases, you are created by your experiences. Your character is shaped by your past. How does your past influence you? Are you reliving your past in the present? Smile over the good and make peace with the bad. Choose quality experiences. Act with reason and purpose. Avoid involvement in unwanted conflict. Create happy memories. Learn from your journey. Don't make your truths a prison. This day is yours to shape. And then the actual card given for the moon and Taurus transit. Emotion and intellect. Eleven of water. Eleven is made as the number for individuality. Master number of service. Made up of a double dose of one new beginnings. Equaling two. Balance. Choice. Patience. Key words, emotion, intellect, love, fear, expression, suppression, head, heart, ease, dis-ease. Key phrases, influence of emotional disharmony. Both love and fear motivate. Is fear the more dominant force? Unvoiced emotions must be expressed. Address unhealthy imbalances. Suppressed emotion creates a dis-ease. Seek a productive means of emotional release. Be proactive and mindful of your emotions. Meaning. I'm just going to do the potential blockage first. Um, the eleven of water blocked has a very simple and direct meaning. If it appears in your reading today, it, like it's... Unblocked meaning symbolises a potential imbalance that needs to be addressed. And the meaning of the Eleven of Water is a balancing and realignment card that addresses any emotional disharmony that may be influencing your choices and environment. It also represents the need for us to see the whole and how an imbalance can affect it. Can affect it. Love and fear. How many times have you heard someone say... That a choice or action has made was made from a place of fear, or was born of a person's insecurities and doubts, or was born of love. When we are attacked by others, we may react and retaliate because we are angry and afraid. But we may also act because we have love for ourselves and wish to address an injustice and prevent further injustice. We may choose not to take a risk or make changes in our lives because we are afraid of an unknown future. But we may also choose not to take a risk that may alter our lives because we love the life we already have. We may be played with doubts, 
but we can also be blinded by love. What motivates our actions the most? Fear or love? The truth is that most of our actions are motivated by both in equal measure. Fear and love, like creation and destruction, cannot exist without one another. They can even appear to be the same force depending on one's perspective. What motivates you to walk away from a friendship or relationship that is causing you hurt and dis-ease? One person might say that you have walked away because you are afraid of being hurt further. Another might say that you walked away because you respect and love yourself and know that you deserve better. Who is right? In most situations, both are right. You are afraid of being hurt again and you do believe you deserve better. You may also be motivated to stay in that relationship because you are afraid to leave or because you are so in love that you are willing to forgive the one who hurts you and give them a second chance. The eleven of water signifies a need to see that you are often motivated by both forces at the same time. Love and fear are two halves of the same whole and each flows into the other. However, an unhealthy imbalance can occur when fear becomes the dominant force and prevents you from breaking free of painful situations or relationships, thereby preventing you from leading a happy and productive life. The Eleven of Water also addresses the subject of suppression and expression. Suppressed emotion can lead to illness. Emotional stress can manifest in the form of depression. Anxiety, high blood pressure, inflammation in the body and in turn dis-ease. There can be real and life-threatening consequences to suppress fear, anger, sorrow and other weightier emotions. The eleventh of water does not suggest that life is meant to be lived on an even keel. Life will always offer up moments that will have us shouting for joy or, conversely, suffering in silence. But if you express, instead of suppress, you will move through life with more ease, as opposed to living a life of dis-ease and suffering. It is better to be proactive and mindful when it comes to your emotions. Never ignore them. Mm Um, one that we're learning to navigate ourselves but one needs to be able to actually know what emotions and feelings are going on and then even have the language and words to describe that so we're um learning all that yeah learning a lot of things all at once hope that resonated with you namaste much appreciation gratitude and unconditional love from Zanoni snowflake <laughs>